Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folare. Uh, of course, the political season is very, very much uh, in, you know, in context as we are because um, 2023 and the race towards it, indeed, as far as the ruling party is concerned, the you know, race towards the uh, primary so that we know who indeed will be the flag bearer, it's, it's just round the corner. Um, there are some people in the ruling party who have declared their intention to run, indeed have embarked on consultative tours, uh, but haven't yet resigned from their political office. Um, is, we, we, let's look at this because um, we are hearing that from within the party, if they fail to comply fully with section 84, subsection 12 of the constitution, that they will be disqualified. Okay, uh, we'll talk about that. Then there's the other, uh, some, are, some are calling it an incongruity of uh, former president, uh, Goodluck Jonathan, uh, being in this race at all. Um, now, President Jonathan hasn't denied that indeed he is in the race. I think what can safely be said is that uh, he said that, well, he's still consulting, and in any case, he's a member of the PDP didn't say he's, you know, anything else, that he's a member of the PDP. Yet, the story persists out there that he's being wooed by the ruling party. How could this happen? Uh, that's why I said that there are those who will see it as something of an incongruity. Uh, Jide Ologon, lawyer and public affairs analyst, he's with us this morning. Fine morning to you, Jide. Good morning. It's, Welcome. It's always our pleasure to have you, Mr. Logon. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Ademola Adegoke, communications consultant, um, and uh, keeps a keen eye on the uh, polity. Uh, a fine morning to you. Good it's, morning. It's Good been morning. a few days. Yeah. Uh, Good morning, Via Satom. Indeed. And to all of us, Asikwombe. So um, that is uh, where we are with this situation. Let's take it from the electoral act that must be complied with. It, and uh, you see people who apparently are running foul of the electoral act, especially, you know, 80 subsection, uh, section 84, subsection 12. Uh, they're out there. They're making their consultations. Uh, what do you think is going on there? Because they know the law as much as anybody else knows the law. So uh, what kind of a game is being played? I think they are banking on the possibility of those, you know, it's, it's still a subsisting suit. Mm. Uh, in, having uh, been appealed. In, uh, yeah, yes. having been appealed. And um, uh, I don't um, want to go to <clears throat> details of, you know, all that happened even before um, a, a court, a high court, invalidated. I don't want to go into the oddity of all that and now and you know the um, the haste with which um, the AGF um, was attempting to delete uh, a section of a law, or you know, or, of, you know, or, um, already passed by an assented to, you know, passed by the house and assented to by the president. I do not know, you know, uh, from where the AGF derives that power, and I mean, and so that 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 case, you know, um, be it as it may, the case is already in court, and perhaps, you know, the people, it is the the, the aspirants who are still holding on to their positions are thinking that probably the court will, at the end of the day, you know, the appellate court will invalidate the the act. Uh, maybe that is what they are banking on. But I want to believe that APC as a party will have learned its, its lesson, you know, from losing um, elections on technical ground as, as it did in Bayesa, as it did in Zamfara, you know, as it did in Rivers. So if um, APC will allow, APC will allow these people to still hold on to their positions and contest, you mm -hmm. know, for them. Uh, it's left. It's it's left to APC. But I do not think you know uh, if their legal advisors are uh, you know do if they are worth they you know the assault. I don't think they want to advise the party to allow them you know to contest. Uh, GD, your take. You know, my first question is that are we in a country that has a robust reputation for giving the rule of law its highest respect? And the answer may not be yes. So when you find such a scenario, you find personalities that want to, you know, test the depth of the water with their two feet. 
But I also know that some days are stipulated for the resignation. I think it should be 30 days before 30 days. the primaries. And some of them may be banking. And of course, we are in a nation when it's at the last minute that you want to get things done. <laughs> but I know the APC has cautioned those who are Indeed. interested in aspiring yes. that please comply with the new provisions of the Electoral uh, Act 2022 as amended. And again, on the other side, I've seen some of these candidates as not really interested in emerging as presidents of the country, but probably just trying to negotiate for some juicy offices that, okay, if I have come out to contest, because there's also a provision that if we engage consensus, then their funds will be refunded uh, to them. So for some of them, they know themselves that they cannot come out because if we put them on the scale of leadership, and I'll be talking about who a leader is here today, uh, they may not enjoy the popularity required for them to emerge as presidents. And I hope that the party, APC specifically now, and uh, maybe the PDP, the big ones, we respect the new laws. Despite the, the contrary decision of the court that that provision should be expunged because whether we like it or not, we have not driven it to conclusion at the appellate level. Even the National Assembly decided to, uh, to proceed on appeal. So but as, we, as, we, as we know right now, the status quo is that you just need to resign yeah. if you're a political appointee. But so, exactly, and as Jide is saying, um, <clears throat> politicians being who they are, they're always negotiating, uh, even with their actions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it might be that this is very much um, uh, that kind of a game. We were talking about, we don't even know who is a willing candidate and who is not, uh, because we're talking mm -hmm. off air about uh, <laughs> candidates in recent memory uh, not necessarily having been willing candidates, whereas we do have very serious candidates who have stated their intention. Indeed, so much so that uh, it's even a life ambition. Uh, we, we have those kinds. Uh, but there still are uh, other candidates that we don't at all know their motives. Ah, well, um, you see, in any election, and perhaps in any competition, you will always have the contenders and the pretenders, um, just like uh, uh, GDA has said. And... Um, you know, like you said, most of these people, maybe they just want to use it to negotiate. Uh, but I think whatever it is, so long there is a credible, robust, you know, sifting pro uh, process, you know, democratic enough, mm. you understand? Democratic, open. We are not talking of consensus here. You understand? Open, you know, credible to everyone. So the, 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 the chaff, you know, will be separated from... From, from the grain, so at the end of the day. But what Nigerians we want to see is that, you know, the party will submit themselves, you know, to, like I've said, a very open democratic process, you understand, without any pranks played, you know, by anybody. And if that is done, you understand, I can assure you that it will not be the, uh, it will not only be the beginning of the end for such a party, you understand? Nigerians will, because Nigerians will, Nigerians are not ready, you understand, for anybody being forced on the process just because maybe someone is interested. You understand? So, I, whatever, anybody can be, can, you know, uh, put himself up as a, as a pretender and he maybe wants to use that to negotiate. But at the end of the day, let there be, you know, an open democratic process. You, you know, let me pick up on, you know, um, uh, Demola's uh, analogy of uh, separating and talking, the rice analogy, separating the chaff from the grain. Um, yes, I can understand chaff from the grain. How about the stones in there? And here I'm <laughs> referring to uh, former President Jonathan. Surely that must be a stone in this particular analogy, because nobody saw that coming, um, um, uh, did you? And um, politicians are usually dead serious. So you can't say that um, they're not serious that it's not a serious idea. They've floated it. They've put it out there. Uh, president Jonathan, uh, former President Jonathan, uh, I had thought would just slap it down entirely. Um, but somebody very close to President Jonathan, Ruben Abati in particular, um, he, he, he himself, I think it's on his website. So, I mean, and he, naturally, they, they must be quite close. So he wouldn't feature it 
if he didn't think uh, it was of some importance. What do you think is going on? You know, my perception at this point is that it's quite speculative because it should be very ridiculous if President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, former president, who was described as clueless, who was bashed on the arms deal scandal, and, you know, is now the bride that APC attempts to be caught in. Firstly, it shows gross disrespect to the candidates who have expressed their intention to emerge as presidents. And it also shows that there is a huge you know, line of distrust within the party. And it, it, it punctures the leadership profiling that you require for succession in the country. If you study the Chinese leadership process, it's amazing. In fact, the U.S. cannot stand beside it because they engage on sustainable leadership that we carry on the development. If you look at Singapore, there wasn't much rancor. Even a woman took over from, from, from the former president. You look at Tanzania, but here we are now. The former president, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, again, by his body language, has not been frequently attending the functions of PDP, even though PDP is saying he's of international figures, so we don't expect that he will always be available. You see, so, and right now, it's so disturbing. And may I say this, it may end up being a sign of failure. Because if I knock someone out of my organization for not being able to perform, and I'm going back to bring him, then I have failed. Mm. And I, I, I own that personal opinion. You see, and I want to say here, and address political parties, please sit down. You should be able within seven years to identify who succeeds effectively. And that brings us to the issue of vision and mission. Leader, as a word, has six letters. And I will use the acronym. The L for link. Someone who can be a link between the people. The E for enlightenment. Somebody who wants to study the templates of leadership across the world to deliver to the people. Like Lin Kuan Yu. He sat down to study functional templates around the world and he improved on it and translated Singapore to one of the best places to live and work today. Mm-hmm. Even though he's a blessed memory. Mm-hmm. You talk about an achiever. You talk about antecedents. You talk about determination. Someone who is determined to drive the change. People like Nelson Mandela, who will stake all they have, sacrifice so much. You talk about enthusiasm. Somebody who is excited about the assignment. And finally, you talk about resourcefulness. Somebody who will ensure refineries are functioning in Nigeria, that the pump price of diesel returns to about 300 naira, that industrialization is ignited in this country, that unemployment is scaled down, you know, that, that people it, prosper. It, it, in short, you see, so you should, you should people, groom. People who care. Care for the people. At the end of the day. Because care everything you people. said in there comes down to caring. Care. Uh, well, the, the, first of all, I actually have a little point where with, um, you know, uh, Jide, who in speaking about Singapore said, uh, a, a woman, a, a woman took over, and I don't know what exactly that meant because that was sexist. Of course, somebody had to take over. They were grooming. They yeah. were grooming, well, you, grooming so, leadership. So, so it was person, even there was but, no gender bias. Uh, I yeah, used it emphatically. Yeah, but, but yes, you know, thank, thank you for doing that. You for know, saying that. and because it's a plus for women. Well, okay. Because naturally, uh-huh, because you said a woman took over, as if to say, of course, somebody no, was going it, to take it, over. It's it complimentary, sir. It it's complimentary. Okay, you meant it as a that compliment. they found the qualities of leadership okay, required okay. to okay. sustain the efforts in a female gender, okay. and they did not object to that. Okay, okay, because if it had been a man, you wouldn't have had a need to mention it. Uh-huh. I would have mentioned it also. Okay, all right. You know, and the same thing played out in Tanzania. Tanzania, the the, the, the leader of Tanzanian government now is 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 a wonderful lady. There you go. Mm. Uh, that, that, so there's no bias. Well, are we ready for that in Nigeria? That, that well, is, a, that is another be? question entirely. Why should it be? <laughs> are we ready to have a madam president in Nigeria? You see, leadership is not about gender. It's about, you know, deliverability. It's about, you know, being prepared. Mm-hmm. It's about, you know, having the plan. You're not just, you know... I, I, I'm not one that will say, just give it to a, a woman oh, yeah, because yeah. she's a woman. Yeah. You understand? But we, we, we find a, a woman that has all the qualities you know, that we require of a leader. 
Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why, why not, not? Uh, a, 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 a woman being commander in chief? Why not? You know, why not? They're everything not? else. They are, fight, they are fighter pilots, they're yeah. this and they're that. You so, know, so, so, so there's no difference, actually. There is no difference. Mm. There is no mm. difference. Mm. It's not about age. It's not about gender. You understand? It's about the personality. It's about, you know, the quality that a person possesses. And uh, maybe let's go back to um, the issue you raised about uh, uh, President uh, Good uh, Jonathan President Jun testing, is, um, uh, which, Isn't he a stone uh, in the which, chaff that was trying to separate from the rice? In because fact, of the very incongruity of in, the idea. Fact, it does look more than a stone for me, <laughs> you understand. Because, um, you see, I don't know, I don't know. If I were president, um, former president, uh, good Lord Jonathan, I would read, you know, between the lines to know that some people only want to use me, you know, to achieve their own selfish interests. That's the way I would say it. And... Uh, we need to be very careful in this country. We need to be very careful the way we do things. If you look at our political trajectory from 1999, you will see that it has been an unending tale of unwilling candidates. Right from 1999, Obasanjo had just come out of prison and he had, you know, um, he quietly, you know, um, uh, he was quite, quietly hibernating in his city called home in Abeokuta. And, uh, you know, but some people felt that, okay, we could use this man, you know, to douse the tension in the land after, you know, the opera that uh, attended uh, June 12th and all that, and all that. And, you know, they went and brought him, and one unwilling candidate. He was leaving, you understand. Others were contesting in PDP. Obasan just single-handedly, you know, fostered uh, President uh, Yaradua, uh, Yarad, uh, you know, uh, God bless his soul, you know, on the, on the PDP, and he became a president. You know, and even as, even when others were also contesting, don't forget that uh, even this man, this man we are talking about now, uh, uh, Jonathan, he was not even, he was just a, he, uh, he was just a governor in Bayesa, and they were looking for a VP, you know, um, uh, candidate. Obasanjo went and brought another unwilling candidate to be the VP of, you know, of an unwilling candidate as the president. And now, you know, um, when Jonathan seemed not to be performing, <laughs> let, me, let me put it that way, and the nation was clamoring for a change, a man who had publicly cried, you know, and said he was retiring, you know, that's in the person of the present president, uh, Muhammad Bubari, we went and dragged him, you know, into the race, and another unwilling candidate. Because he had said that he wasn't going to run. He, he had said he wasn't, he wasn't going, going to run. run Another unwilling candidate. This, this is just... You, 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 you understand? And then he became president. Now, we are also, you know, toying with the idea, you know, tinkering with the idea of having another unwilling candidate. Whereas there are people who have long planned, who have put everything in motion, you understand, who perhaps will have had their, you know, ideas were drawn out to get to the office and what they want to do there. And now, and now we are turning to Jonathan. Are, are we? Are, are we? And that is the question. Mm -hmm. are, are we really turning to the respected former President Jonathan? Are we? Because it's they such an... No it's such an it's and a, the man has not denied it. This is the problem that I have. <laughs> the man, you know, has, the man has not shut it down. Uh, very much in the same way that Vice President Oshibajo mm. over the months over never, the never, never shut down yeah. all those rumors before he finally before made he finally his recording made the declaration. Uh, the, 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 the recording decla the recorded and recording declaration. Uh, uh, he didn't shut it down. Now former President Jonathan is not shutting this particular he, he, uh, rumor down. No, he said watch out. You know, just <laughs> last Friday when those youths visited him, you what, know his body yes, language. Just watch this space. Uh -huh. Watch he's, this he's, space. He's, I'm his consulting. Body language, his body language. When a politician tells you I'm, con I'm, I'm still consulting, you know <laughs> he's been here. <laughs> Well, well, you we'll see, you see, given the circumstances <laughs> by which the former president left office, if he has another opportunity to return, naturally, he will not throw it out of the window. It's on record that he congratulated President Muhammadu Buhari as a candidate, even before the conclusion of the counting of the votes. And there was a peace committee that sat on his neck in court at that point in yeah. time. Because recall, 
that President Muhammad Buhari as a candidate threatened in year 2011 that if the election of 2015 is rigged by his own perception, that he will soak the dogs and baboons in and, blood. Uh, uh, blood. So there came up a peace the committee, dog, yes. A peace committee that, no, we don't need blood. We don't need any baboon or dogs. That went in. And that peace committee is still there. And that's where I agree with you, sir. There's a power block in this country yeah. that are still highly effective. Now, uh, General Ibe, uh, uh, Babangida, uh, uh. Even though he's just enjoying himself in Mina, he's still <laughs> being consulted. Power brokers that are there. So where is the interest of the, the people? The people. Okay. That's Let's, the big question. Okay, one moment. Let's hear it from Mr. George. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you for calling yeah, in. Yeah, Uncle Yuri, uh, one does not need to worry himself about those ministers who are not uh, resigning. They know what they are doing. Uh, anybody that is serious to contest knows that they have to follow the rules. Like uh, the gentleman on your right said, if they are probably trying to play games so as to negotiate for something in the next government. That is clear. But it is when the, their party actually allows them to contest, we know that the party is not serious. On the issue of former President Jonathan, uh, I won't be surprised if the APC tries it, because APC has been trying so many surprising things of recent. But here is the case. This man is the same person that APC came to replace, because his government was considered to be corrupt. The government was not good in security, you know, uh, securing the country, and the person that came to replace him has pardoned the, the governor that we are jailed, that were supposed to be corrupt. Mm -hmm. And now he's trying to bring back the same person that was considered to be corrupt that a change slogan was constructed for. I just hope it is not true. One thing I want to tell the current government is that we are not stupid. And they should not think that the voters in this country are just walkovers. Thanks to IMEX new technology drive, which is not very easy to reach again. They should bear that in mind, that credibility matters if it, not, if it is not today, tomorrow, or in the, near, in the very near future. But we cannot just be stupefied. Good morning, Uncle Yuri. Thank you very much for calling in, uh, Mr. George. When uh, GD referred to you know, this, this talk at all mm. on something of a Mm. pseudo serious level mm. uh, of former president Jonathan possibly becoming mm. a, can, a, a mm. candidate. Um, he, he, he said it was disrespectful, quite frankly, really? to, 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 to the candidates to the that candidates. who have declared mm. and who are being taken seriously. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. Especially consider APC uh, at, at the time, uh, Elijah Lai Mohammed was the um, yeah, he was the spokesperson, you know, chief yeah. spokesperson yeah. For, uh, for, oh, for the party. Yeah, for the party, then. Uh, he opposition virtually, party then. For the opposition party then. He virtually invented the language of uh, cluelessness mm. because at every opportunity he had, you know, the president and his government at the time, who were the ruling uh, uh, parties, um, he, he called them clueless. How that same party now, you know, uh, from cluelessness, if indeed everybody in APC accepted that, to a situation where he might or he might not be running uh, out of his own party into their party and theoretically pick up the ticket. But I have someone in the UK. Um, is it Mr. Adi? Uh, good morning, Mr. Adi in the UK. Yeah, good morning, Dr. Yori. Good morning, the sir. Is expensive now. I'm using dollar to call now, so it's expensive. Um, I, I think what I want to say is this. I just get a little volume? I, 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 I concur with uh, uh, Mr. George on what he said. Voters in Nigeria are not stupid. We know what we are doing. If you watch Channel TV last week, you see Senator Marafa was on TV, and he said, uh, Bumi has laid a landmine for the incoming chairman of APC. This is one of the landmines. It is, it is Bumi's arrangement that Jonathan should come. You know how to shut Limbo out. That is why since last year, he has been attending every organization of APC, including the wedding of Mr. President's son in Cannes last year. So Jonathan has been going everywhere. 
But it's a real a landmine because if they choose Jonathan, the PDP can choose Atiku or uh, Saraki. The Southwest will vote for PDP in the presidential. Get, take that home from me. Because these two people con have connection with the Southwest. Their wife, the wife of uh, Atiku is from Southwest. But Saraki's mother is from one of those states. So if PDP pick them, PDP will win the election. If APT make mistake, I'm. Um, Book Jonathan there. That would be a betrayal to the Southeast who have been voting for Jonathan throughout. So let them not make that mistake. Please help me to tell Mr. President. We are no fools. I will come back home and vote. God bless you. Mr. Yori, go and pick the form. Thank you very much for calling in, <laughs> Mr. Aula. Uh, there, there is also the question of whether President Jonathan, former President Jonathan, is even uh, qualified to vote, you know, legally. You know, whether he can actually fit the bill. He's, he's already done six years. So how are you going to work that out? Yes, is, is, is that is, one is, and a half is terms? That an age limit? Uh, no, know. six years. Six, six, six years. years. Yes, th yeah, that fear is in the air that he may not even be able to go beyond. But I think we should not even consider it. You know, this recycling uh -uh. is, 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 is really thing. disturbing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it means that not much has been achieved. Mm. If you have achieved so much, you need to move forward. You need to move forward, not going back and forth. And like, like one of the callers just said, how does the clueless now become clueful? <laughs> we need to look at this. <laughs> Ma we need to look at this. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. Good morning, our guest in the studio. Yes. You see, uh, when people said, when I, when I opened the first page of it, I said the minister, uh, I need to ask the other to raise the disqualification. Now, I've been asking them, so, all these people, where are they going to get this 400 million to go and buy this for? <laughs> and they have not reserved. To me, I look at it just, just like a gamble. This uh, Lebanese, uh, this, uh, Lebanese uh, gamble, gamble, gambling you see every day, just can look at and try. I think the minister are just trying to put a, 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 a gamble game. But it will not work. But to me, former President Jonathan should forget the call to say this personality. Personality, see, people like Clark, I think they have spoken. Because when Jonathan was having challenges when he was in the office, Clark was the man that would stand behind that in front and say, Look, don't touch Jonathan. It is our man. And Clark has spoken that. that the presidency, the Shuzo need to be Israel. But Jonathan coming back, what do they leave from the past leaders? You see, respect, at least, respect the office. At least, you throw in the tower when the atmosphere was very, very hot. Very, very hot. Very hot that was just to, to, to turn Nigeria upside down like civil war. Thank God it didn't happen. But now, to me, Mr. Jonathan, what has he forgotten in Asorok that is going to pick? What is it? Is it what? Is it drink or what? Or is it uh, uh, to connect or what? To me, let him see that. Because you see, past American president, past British president or prime minister, what do they do? They sit down and give advice. It should be a, a, a statement that you give advice to the current government and look, do this thing. I will suggest, you suggest. That's what you do. For you to go back, one, age is there. Two, at least, he has seen the past. The same people who pulled him out from the office are the same people he's going to meet. What is his guarantee? Let me allow others to come on board so that we move forward. Easy shop. Go, 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 go. Oh, God, Jonathan, please stay at home and rest and be taking fresh air. Thank you very much. Have a good day in. Okay, okay. thank you very much, uh, Mazi Okorapo in Arochu. Uh, the race for 2023, um, it's going to. I suppose the real flag off will be from the from the um, primaries, and the primary is what? That's at the end of the month. That's at the yeah. the end of the month. And uh, uh, who and who are going to be presenting themselves for screening? Uh, we've looked at what many consider as the the incongruity of President Goodluck Jonathan uh, crossing over from his party that he has affirmed he is still a member of, as we speak into the APC and then be, and thereby become a candidate and uh, where he will be screened. Uh, APC has said that it will be screening everybody, of course. It even goes about saying they have to screen people. And um, as for those public servants who have um, declared but have not given up their office, their offices yet, 
Well, uh, the party has said that they will do the needful when that, kind, when that time comes. Um, okay, uh, the, the, what has sort of generated much conversation is the issue of President Jonathan uh, and why he hasn't shot the whole matter down entirely. But then I said, well, um, that is how a lot of people before we knew more uh, did not shut, you know, the whole idea of President, uh, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo down as well, you know, because we were saying that, look, I I is it to be or is it not to be? In any case, why, why aren't we being helped? Why, why won't the man just come and shut it all down or say that, indeed, I am in the race? But it was a matter of time. And when the time was ripe, the president, uh, the vice president did his recording uh, and, you know, everybody knew on social media that indeed he's in the race. It, could, could this be something like that with President Jonathan? But before you go, please, uh, Joseph has called in from Abuja. Good morning to you, Mr. Joseph. Oh. You, you're very, very low, Mr. Joseph. Joseph, you're extremely low. I can't hear you. Sorry, good morning, sir. Uncle Yeri. Ah, ah, good morning, sir. Loud and clear now. Good morning, sir. Uncle Yeri, I just want... Okay. okay. I, I just have one... Okay. Good morning. I, I just have one advice for former President Ebele Jonathan. And that advice is... First fool is not a fool, is not a fool. It's the second fool that is proper foolish. If all the things they cajoled him before they forced him out of office, he want to go and make way for them again. That is left for him. Like the last caller said, what did he forget in Asura that he went to pick? I stand by that. He should carry his champion, world champion and the rest and enjoy it the rest of his life. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Joseph. You know, short and sweet, and uh, that's your opinion. Uh, however, uh, the Vice President will also have his own numerous supporters uh, that have not counseled him against uh, the whole idea. Otherwise, we would have got to hear about it. Uh, no, no, we would have got to hear that not everybody in President Jonathan's camp is, uh, see, sees it like that. But as I say, we go back to the point that it has not been shut down, and I liken that to, well, that is how they didn't shut down the whole talk about uh, 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 PYO, Professor Yemil Shibaju, and now it's a full, full go it's a going concern. So it just might well be that um, uh, former President Jonathan knows something the rest of us don't, because these things cannot be done without intense consultation between him and the APC. Yeah, you see, for me, um, it's one affront too many. If uh, indeed it turns out to be true. Yes, if indeed it turns out to be true. If it turns out to be true, it is one affront too, too many. Um, uh, if, even though talking, they say anything can happen, happen in Nigeria. No. Even uh, in spite uh, of that. Jide was talking about the whole thing being disrespectful to other contestants who yes. are prepared. But I feel it is even disrespectful to Nigerians, even by APC, taking us, it means that, you know, these politicians think that they can just do anything and get away with it. And I do not blame them. I blame us that we have, Nigerians have willingly ensnared themselves, you know, in the trap, in the cage of these two major political parties. You understand? And we are not considering other, <laughs> other options. It is like it is through these two political parties that you can get to God. That is the way. That is that's the, that's the way we are. We are you know that's the way we are relating with these two political parties. Well, um, the other caller from UK was saying that he was talking about PDP picking a candidate, and then as if we cannot even you know consider some other parties. As if after APC it is only PDP. Perhaps you know um, you know don't forget that there was a time in this country when PDP, you know, said, you know, openly boasted that it will rule for the next 60 years. It never ruled for the, you know, for uh, up to 20 years before it was booted out of office. Uh, it was taught a lesson. 
Perhaps it is time. We have already, Nigerians taught PDP a lesson. Perhaps it is now time for us to even teach the two of them a lesson that we can make some other choices other than the two of you. Don't forget that even the, even the, when you look at um, PDP, you look at even, you know, the, the aspirants there presently. It's like, I mean, one was, I, one was talking and I said, give me this power. Give me this power. And the way it was, so it that means that all that, all that matters <laughs> is power. You know, the interest of Nigerians, you know, does not matter. You understand? Give me this power. And so that's what, that's what they want. And somebody, mm -hmm. has, somebody, somebody has said, you know, uh, in the course of the program that mm. the voters, the people, are not stupid. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you to, to, to determine what that can <clears> be, <throat> if indeed, and nobody is going to admit in Nigeria that he's stupid. <laughs> but it, it was also said that, uh, it's also been said on this program that um, uh, Obama and your quote unquote single handedly foisted Yera Dua on us. Yes. Um, by the way, is that kind of thing out of style? Can President Muhammadu Buhari uh, quote unquote single handedly foist Voice. anybody on us? You know, I won't answer if that. If one president could do it, can another? I won't answer that question directly, but to make reference to how the chairman of the party emerged recently. Mm. And uh, you can answer the question whether President Muhammad Buhari as an individual is so influential that he can really make things happen. And I say yes to that. <laughs> so, and that is the most recent reference we can make. And let me say this. <clears throat> In public relations, the 1978 Mexican statement, we say public relations is the art and social science of monitoring trends, predicting their consequences. And you can extend it further. I foresee a situation in this country where electorates won't vote based on party loyalism, mm. but on the fact that who can bail us out, because people have had a taste. You cannot even say which is APC, which is which PDC is now. You see, go and look at the composition. The lines are being blurred the APC as a because of activity. The majority of them were in PDP. You see, and talking about the, the other parties, they've been docile. And again, you know, in Nigeria, it's a matter of money. So how many of the parties have the kind of money that PDP and APC controls? There are 774 local governments uh, uh, in, in Nigeria. And so how do you have structures? Not to talk of the words that are more extensive. So these are issues. And that is why you see people, you know, jogging into these two dominant parties. And you, it's not a Nigerian thing alone. In the USA, you have the Republicans and the, the Democrats. Democrats. There are other parties. And that's why we are advising the lesser parties in court now should begin to engage issues. Can, can a party engage education? Wrong with Section 18 of the Nigerian Constitution, I think that's amended, that says the government must provide education for all citizens. Can another one engage economy? Can another one engage security? You know, there are issues you engage in. To be relevant. So right now, when, it, when you talk about visibility, APC and PDP are hyper-visible. But those are not the only parties we have. And right now, we need to address the electorates. Please, if you don't have your PVC, your votes must count. Go get it. Get ready. And right now, we are advising beyond the complaints. Get involved in politics. Go to your world level. Get involved. You know, that's a very interesting... Get involved in politics you know, so you... that you can be part of the decision process. If not, they go to primaries and just impose a candidate on you. So what do you do after that? You know, it's a very interesting idea you, 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 you kicked up about um, seeing a time when Nigerians would concentrate on the candidate and not necessarily and the not party. And not necessarily the party. You know. uh, Yakub in Dokwemo, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Thank you for calling and uh, good morning to your two guys in the studio. Good morning. Uh, you see, these two political parties, they thought uh, Nigeria, they thought that we are fools. We are not fools, we are wise now. But the only problem is that uh, the Nigerian politics is already monetized. Uh, remember someone says that, uh, what about other political... In fact, one of your guys is just is, is talk something like that now, that what about other political parties? If you only have to sit as Nigerians today, not any other political party that can win, rather than, the, the, rather than these two political parties that we know. You know why? Why? Because the resources. 
Because the Syrian policy is so monitored to, say, to this extent that today, somebody that will, that, will, that will tell you that APC is not good, PDP is not good. Tomorrow we will send another thing. When you already, already cash out, like say you want to you go to ATM and withdraw. So some of us, there's nobody can give some of us money to convince us to vote for who we don't want to vote for. Let me come back to this um, um, uh, former president uh, issue. You see, Kibjari, uh, this calculation is from the north. Let me, let me, let me just tell you this. The, the, if, the, if, the, if APC presents good Lord Abel Jonathan, the former president, and then the way it is in, in, in PDP as of today, I'm very sure if they, if they throw it open, right? Hello, hello? Yes, can yes, yes, that? yes. We can, please continue. Can uh, yes. Yeah, not any other party within that PDP, from not any other person within that PDP, from South South, that or South West that can take that, that, uh, that, that ticket from the PDP. And then they know that they feel somebody from... Okay, I, I think I sort of got where you were going. I got the direction and we can... We can only imagine, we can make up from the bit that you did say. But let me pick up on something that you did say and ask the studio guests here. Uh, Yakub said in the earlier, no other party can ah, win I'm in going Nigeria. To, I'm going to talk on that. Yeah, oh, because I, I want no, to interrogate no, that. No, no, no. Because there are contestants, there are contestants out there who don't believe that statement. I, Otherwise, I, I do not believe yes. it. And, 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 and there are, you know, there are recent examples that we can cite. You understand? I think in the 2019 election, a young man in Nondo State, um, in uh, uh, Ifedore, Ifedore, a federal constituency, you know, defeated both um, um, uh, PDP and APC. There were a one, a one, man, one young man called uh, uh, Small Alaji. In Anambra, YPP, or you know, uh, uh, contesting under YPP, became a senator. So, what makes us think that? You see, I want, what, 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 what comes to mind now is, the, is that, 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 that um, very uh, popular saying by the former Ghanaian president, um, Kwame Nkrumah. You know, he had told Africans, he said, seek ye first political uh, freedom and all other things, you know, will uh, follow. I want to also say that let us seek first your credible electoral process. Okay. It, okay. We, when we have a very credible electoral process. Any party can win okay. because it will not depend on money. Mm -hmm. It will not depend on how much money you can throw around. It will depend on how well your policies, your manifesto, and everything resonates with the people. Okay. Having been well articulated. Uh, Francis in Port Harcourt. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Francis in River State. Okay, Francis, oh. Francis, I think, let me bring that question to you. Yes, good morning, Uncle Yuri. How are you doing? Okay, uh, yes, I'm on board. Uh, <laughs> Francis. Yes. Yes, come on board. Okay, okay, I hope I'm not uh, howling back. You can hear no, me? No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're fine. You just were... Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm here. Okay, please go ahead now. Can I go ahead? Yes, please. Uh, yes, you, can you hear me, Uncle Yuri? Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, I just want to contribute to the discussion going on in the studio there. Go ahead, please. Okay, very good. Uncle, uh, see what I listen. I've listened to your speaker on the studio talking about people joining politics and all that, which is very good. But let me tell you, this ugly, this ugly status quo will change. This scenario, these things we are seeing in our national polity, obviously. If you go to your ward. Or, or any one in the Pacific states of the Federation, PDP, APC, they have all installed their political entrepreneurs. There. Some of them are even talks. They are the ones manning your ward executive, your local government executive, the state executive of the party. So when they tell me, you go get your PBC, it's just like conventionally telling us to go and exercise our franchise, our citizenry. Because when you go to vote, you will either vote for a candidate of PD or APC that is not the people's candidate, because they are the ones that choose who they give tickets and who they will not give tickets. Keep us control everything from the local government level to the state to the national level. 
it's such an unfortunate situation. So I advocate for we Nigerians. If we really want, think we can change this status quo, the civil society, the religious body, and sound mind need to all come out and we generally look for unpopular political party, install credible world executive leaders, local government, and state. And then we take our time during primary, people with quality, that's what they are doing for living, we throw up themselves for elected position. And then they will go for primary that is credible. And the day of election, let me tell you, we will see need political talks that are not being favored from the old order to help us manage this crisis. Because during the election, who votes? The peasants, check, anytime they are voting. 80% of the people you see on the line voting are the peasants. And the peasants have no mind of their own. So vote buying will be across board. What we need to do at this point is we will follow them and buy votes, convince the peasants to vote those credible candidates. We may not be able to take over executive leadership in most states, but at least gradually we will take over state congresses, some federal house of rest seats, and senatorial seats, and supposedly we will even have one or two governors. Okay. Because this thing we are okay, talking Francis. is deep. 2050, okay. 2060, is still going to continue? We don't have the financial resources to finance elections. We don't. The All right. I know a lot okay, thank, thank you very much, Francis. Um, if you can't beat them, join them. Seem, they, they seem to be overthrown of that, that, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to play fair, and so we, 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 we shorten ourselves uh, we should change ourselves if we decide to pray fair. That was his particular uh, uh, analysis, if I got him right. But coming to you, Jide, the question that has already been touched on by Ademola, no other party but the two, the, the ruling party and the major opposition, in other words, APC, PDP, can possibly win that this election. Of course, many people don't believe that. Otherwise, there won't be other candidates, as you know. Uh, are actually indicating now and are throwing their, their hats in the ring. Yeah, that gate cannot be locked. It's kept open. But you need the capacity to mobilize. Yeah, they, yes. You know, they, they, we we so have some shocks. That's why some, the idea is coming when out some, you know, Nobody can uh, win if you're uh, not from APC or PDP simply because it is felt that that is where the money or the possibility to garner enough of it No, uh, Not lies. exactly. If we move in the right direction, money may start failing. Because mm. people, we even register in your party and not vote for you. Because they don't trust you to transform life for them. Right now, what's the rate of inflation in the country? What is the profile is of the insecurity? Is that logical, do you think? They are being forced to be logical. Now, you see, Uncle, we need to go out there. You know, we are not speaking from tinted glass and smoked <laughs> uh, screen vehicles with Mopola around us. We are in the marketplace. We, mm -hmm. we relate with the people. We know what is going on. Go out there and do some salutations that will end you hailing some years ago. They will almost throw you out of the... the, 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 the you know, so the, the times are tough for the people. And they are now being forced to study the situation. And we have been told over and over that you can, you may shout, you may do everything, but the legitimate weapon you have is your vote. Your vote. And people are beginning to understand that. People okay. are beginning to understand that. That is why we are, and I quite appreciate the last caller, very brilliant submissions there. But then, if you don't start infiltrating, then the corrupt system will continue. A Nelson Mandela joined the politics for a purpose and eventually dislodged apartheid in South Africa. So and that's why even we are advising. Even if it took right from the world level, and if you are influential enough to start at the state level, maybe you have an uncle who is an existing uh, political uh, big wig. Go in there. Let's let's begin to join and see the light we can shine. You know, we we need to redeem it's this country that from. The that you the know. electorate that is being, you know, uh, 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 that the people that uh, these politicians are taking their, uh, their, their pitches to, uh, you encourage that they're not, they're not exactly dumb, we're not stupid, and that they will actually go ahead and vote their conscience and their understanding and their logic, never mind the party that floated, uh, that, that, that put those candidates forward. And, and that is the spirit of democracy. You see, okay. maybe because uh, we uh, emphasize uh, the elections uh, above uh, I'm going to come back to you. Let, let, let me not delay Joseph in Ogudu any longer. Good morning to you, sir. Good. Joseph, good morning in Ogudu. 
Joseph in Ogudu. It looks like there's a very long delay today. Joseph in Ogudu wants to join the program. Joseph, can you hear us? Okay. Meanwhile, uh, you, you wanted to add to that uh, idea about the independence of the minds of uh, the electorate, that they're not going to be zombies that they have been before. You know, the last caller talked about the majority of voters being peasants. It's not because the elite, uh, it's not all the elite that are, you know, are averse to voting. It's not. But it is the belief, the mindset that if I vote, will my vote count? And that is the, and that is the part we need to play. We need to force the present managers of the system to give us very credible electoral process. And I'll give you an example. You know that uh, the state INEC, almost, uh, the state um, uh, independent yes. electoral uh, commission, you know that almost every, uh, um, every election conducted by the state INEC, we all will be at the state uh, independent electoral commission, will always be won by the party in power. Yes. But Kaduna did something, you know, that was, um, um, you can say, out of the box. The, elect the electronic voting system that the whole country is saying is not possible, Kaduna introduced it. And in the last local government election, um, uh, with um, uh, APC being the ruling party, PDP won as many as five chairmanship seats in Kaduna and, so uh, and, several, and several councillorship seats. So what so, you're, what you're so, saying, Demola, so that, that is have, an indication of possibility. It's an indication of possibility. Of possibility. Of possibility. Of possibility. Okay, we're running out of time. Did you want to add to that whole idea about the independence of the mind of the electorate, that somehow our eye don't clear? Charlie Boy, uh, I think uh, he's only... Our Mumudu. Our Mumudu. <laughs> has our Mumudu... Uh. You know, with a yeah. credible system like what the Electoral Act Amendment is trying to carry out, and with enlightened citizenry, we can translate the narratives of this country. But please, let's get act active. Don't be docile. Get involved. Politics is about the affairs of your life, how your resources yeah. are managed, how your community is managed, how whether your future will be secured or mortgaged. So if you are not involved, then how can you contribute? So and it, it, we are advising. It, it, it's like a rally call to the youth because uh, that's where the power really is. The power of numbers. Absolutely. The power there of is, you know, God the has youth. a brilliant future for everyone, but you must get involved to work out that future. And that's what we are saying. So okay. don't be docile. Join. Yeah. You are above 18, from 18 and above. Go get your PVC. Well, join politics at your world level. You know, get prepared, learn about good governance so well, that you can hope, instruct your expectations I and hope, key in. I, I hope get involved. I hope the stereotype that the youth are not interested is wrong and that the youth are interested and uh, will indeed heed your advice. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jide Ologun, lawyer and public affairs analyst. And uh, also thanks to you, Mr. Demala De Guke, communications consultant. Thank, Thank you, both gentlemen. And uh, also to you for you know, making the program what it is, calling in with your commentaries as well. That's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now.